The Fairly Odd Parents is by far one of the most beloved Nicktoons of all time. It was one of the longest-running shows to air on Nickelodeon and is often considered a staple of the network. What's notable is that recently, a sequel series began called Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish. It's been getting glowing admiration so far, so now seems like a good time to talk about this show in the only way I know how, by reviewing its old Flash games. Of course, like any other Nicktoon, the Fairly Odd Parents had a good share of them, but being one of the longest-running shows on the network, it did get considerably more than many other shows did. So let's start at the beginning and see where the Flashy Odd Parents got their start. The very first game to be released was Sugar Rush, which came out in 2001. It was developed by iTunes, also known as snap to play They were a remarkable company on the old Nickelodeon website, giving us a ton of classic games and even inventing one of the most popular Spongebob memes. This game has a simple yet fitting premise for a game based on the show. It's Timmy's bedtime, but all he wants to do is munch on sugary snacks. Ain't that relatable? So you have to move Timmy through each level of the house and grab every sweet treat that's laying around for some reason. Vicky is chasing you, but she won't catch you most of the time. Though she will follow you everywhere you go, you can easily escape if you just get her stuck behind the furniture or one of these transparent walls. Also, don't try to grab the gum. It makes you stick to the floor. But you can also run into Cosmo or Wanda for a power-up. Cosmo will make you run so fast that you can barely keep up with yourself. It's handy if Vicky is nearby, but it does make it harder to collect the sweets, especially the small ones like the cookies. And Wanda will give you invincibility, which is extremely useful because then you can just run over the gum. And check it out, I'm phasing through the wall. And look, Mr. Turner finally got that trophy. And every stage ends when you grab all the food. And fun fact, the show being parodied on the victory screen is called I Love Lucy. Wow, I feel so appreciated. And even with such a simple premise, I think this is a very good adaptation. I like seeing the different stories of the Turner household and running through each of them. It incorporates the show's environment, the evil babysitter Vicky, and the ability to have Cosmo or Wanda grant you a wish. This is as fairly odd parents as it gets. I see we're off to a great start, so let's see what else iTunes made. One of my favorite episodes was Power Mad, one where Timmy, Chester, and AJ have to make their way through a really tough video game. At the time, I'm sure we all wanted to see a game based on this episode, so if we really wanted to play through one, we could check out its level and break into rules. But if that wasn't an option, we could go with Power Surge Online. I'd say it's mostly true to the game's difficulty from the show. You have to duck or jump over these swinging mace devices, making your way through them. It can get tough when they just come out of the ground and you have to hope your jumps are high enough. And you want to know the kicker? You can be playing for what feels like 60 centuries and you'll still only be on the first level. And if you run out of lives, you watch Timmy die. Every so often, these bolas will fly in, and it isn't really obvious that they're supposed to be power-ups. The instructions say you can grab energy bursts for extra power, but with everything that's trying to kill you, you might avoid these on instinct. But once you get them, you can dash through the maces and watch them shatter. Then you find a giant wanda coin and leap into it to move on to the next stage. Then you gotta go over classroom desks and jump over walls. Sometimes the desks will open, too. But with your energy boost, you can break right through them. Then you can see the damage you did. I like that little detail. And on level 3, you're avoiding rockets until Robot Vicky shows up. Then all you do is jump into the Wanda coin and you win. Now this game is okay, but again, very true to the difficulty of the game in the episode. Like I said, the stages can seem like they go on forever, and it's hard to keep yourself from dying the entire time. Still, the level designs are really good, and you can't say it isn't reflective of its source material. It really made the most of the Power Mad episode, and you can tell they wanted to make use of everything they could. Not bad. So now let's check out a couple of games that were based on the same episode. It was also a really popular one that lent itself to having a video game adaptation. Information Stuber Highway was a famous episode where Timmy was forced to go into the internet to retrieve an email he sent to Trixie. This was only after his parents made some undesirable changes to it when he only wanted to ask her to the dance. Like with Power Mad, this was an episode that many of us wanted to play as a video game. The scenes of Timmy surfing through the web looked really fun at the time. So we have two different games that allow us to do exactly that. The first is called Cyberspace Chase, made by iTunes. Now this one's a little messy. You move Timmy through the World Wide Web and try not to get killed by literally everything. There are lasers being blasted at you, red demons of death, holes that open up and suck you in, and crocker viruses. There is so much going on that it's hard to keep track of it all. The holes are the worst because they're everywhere and freeze you in your tracks, allowing other obstacles to hit you. 
They're awful to work around. Thankfully, the game is very generous with the amount of extra health it gives you. You also have to collect emails, but look at all these. How many emails did he send to Trixie? He's trying to stop himself from spamming her. I appreciate the effort. And every stage introduces a new hazard, such as this spam that slows you down. There are only three stages and then you win, so it isn't too long of a game. And while it is a bit of a challenge, you do get the hang of it eventually. And like I said, the game is generous with the extra health, so you can take most of the hits as long as you keep regenerating it. Just don't be afraid to go out of your way for those power-ups. But now let's move away from iTunes, because there was a much bigger game based on this episode. It was made for the 3D Groove Engine, which was a popular means of making games in the early 2000s. But they didn't always age well, and a lot of them don't work properly anymore. So you'll be glad to know that this one is still fully functional. Developed by Ezone, the most popular company to make games for the 3D Groove Engine, this is Information Stupor Highway. We start with an opening cutscene that shows Timmy's dad writing the email to Trixie. Then you get this really cool intro of Timmy surfing the web with the Crocker viruses chasing him. And when we start, we might be surprised to see just how many different game modes there are. This is a racing game, and you can have up to four players, but you don't race each other. You just take turns racing against the Crocker viruses. You can control either Timmy, Cosmo, or Wanda, so there's some variety, too. There's also a time trial where you just try to complete a course as quickly as possible, and an email rescue mode where you collect emails. But the standard mode is just a race against the viruses. Their laughs can be really unsettling to hear while going through this course. <laughs> But as you can see, the environment is true to the episodes, and it's just as much fun to fly through as my child self thought it would be. Just don't crash into anything, because then you have to reposition yourself and it isn't as easy as you might think it is. You can also go with easy, medium, or hard mode, which will make slight alterations to the course. Either way, this is a lot of fun, and one you can enjoy playing in your free time. It might actually be one of my favorite games on the 3D Groove Engine. Very little to complain about. Though the menu screen is a little faulty because you have to click above the option you want to select instead of on it, but that might just be the result of aging technology. So for now, let's move back to the Flash games. Here's a recognizable one. Timmy's Tile Turner was a unique board game that was made as part of a series of Nickelodeon board game games. Another notable one was Sponge Seek, which was similar to Battleship. In this, you choose to control either Timmy, Vicky, or AJ, then you face an opponent and try to move your tiles across a board. You jump over your enemy's tiles, then fill spaces surrounding them. You try to overwhelm your enemy as you both fill the board. Whoever takes up the most space is the winner. You can either play against the computer or another player. Or, like in the other games of its kind, you can do an email game. This is where you make a move, then send an email to your friends so they can make their own move. Imagine you make a wrong move and the events of Information Stupor Highway occur. Inconvenient, but innovative at the time. So now let's check out a much bigger one. In 2003, a special episode aired called The Big Superhero Wish. It involved Timmy wishing that the real world could be filled with superheroes, turning all of his classmates into them. But this wish also involved turning people into supervillains, so that's where our conflict came in. With such a big and highly advertised episode, it was only natural that it received its own Flash game. And guess who they hired to develop it? Yeah, Big Superhero Wish was made by Sarbakken, one of the biggest and most admirable Flash game companies to ever exist. This came out around the same time as SpongeBob's Pizza Toss, so they were only just beginning to make their mark on Nick.com. Right away, we can see this looks significantly higher quality than any of the other games. We even have a story being told through comic panels. You get to see it whenever you beat a stage. Becoming Clef, the boy Chin Wonder, you move through panels and blast bad guys with your teleportation ray. This sends them to jail. The bad guys include Dr. Croctopus, Baby Shredder, The Bull E, Short Fuse, and Spatula Woman. They can appear in a variety of sizes, so you have to zap them before they get away. But watch out, Cosmo, Wanda, Chester, AJ, and Elmer can also jump in. Get out of the way, you idiots! Why are you trying to stop me from catching the villains? Every stage takes you to a different environment, too, so you can really explore Dimsdale and all its comic-y goodness. It also helps that the arrows to switch panels light up when a villain appears in one. This is a very unique format, and I like it a lot. A nice little spin on a target shooter, though the cutscenes can be pretty silly. Imagine catching all the world's biggest criminals and seeing them escape jail right in front of you, and all you can say is, The Great Escape. And there's also this cutscene. <laughs> huh? But 
this one's really good. So now let's look at another big Sarbacan game that came out in the years of old, aka 2005. This is Rhythm Revolution, and yes, it's a rhythm game. Long-time watchers of mine know that I have no greater weakness than rhythm games. My fingers are just too slow. But there's a little more to this one. It was based on the big summer special Schools Out the Musical. So what better way to adapt a musical episode than to have a musical-themed game? It's the last day of school before summer break, but everything is boring. The Pixies are turning everything gray and uninteresting, so you have to make it all fun again. You do this by moving behind objects and finding buildings that the Pixies have made boring. Then when the meter at the top of the screen tells you to jump, you leap into one of the buildings and play a rhythm game with either Cosmo or Wanda. You hit the correlating arrow key to hit all the boring stuff, but ignore the fun stuff. And sometimes, you have to hold the key down or hit more than one at once. It's not too bad at first, but it gets harder as it goes. It's also fun to watch your surroundings completely change as you progress. Then a pixie flies in and either laughs at your failure or gets angry because you changed everything. So you just work your way through the town and make everything fun. Now as bad as I am at rhythm games, I kinda like this one. It has its own style and the details are really creative. I even like the additions like the bonus points you can get if you're quick enough to jump into a new area. And the music is fun to listen to. This is one game the Pixies couldn't get their hands on because it sure is a good time. But there's one more Sarbacan game I'd like to look at, then we'll close with two games by another big company. But for now, this is called Fast Fame, based on the episode Fairy Idol. Now that was a big deal when it first came out. Everyone wanted to know who was gonna win, and that ended up being Cosmo. But in this, Wanda has lost her wand and she needs to perform in front of an audience. Now Cosmo and Timmy have to find it. They do this by finding traps, disarming them, then bouncing on audience members while avoiding security guards. In hard mode, Jorgen is patrolling the top of the screen. First, you have to find the traps in a stage, which are indicated by ropes, then you click them to get rid of them. Then you find one of three rows to jump through, hoping you aren't caught by a security guard. It's pretty straightforward. And look at Timmy's face. What emotion is he trying to convey here? But the game is standard. Not bad, but nothing record-breaking. But now that we're in 2006, let's take a moment to look at two games made by another one of the biggest Nick.com companies. Smashing Ideas was one that had been with the website since the 90s. In the mid to late 2000s, they made several high-quality games that are still beloved by many today. I can't think of a more appropriate company to end this video with, so let's check out what they made for us. To start, let's look at their Christmas game, Showdown at Santa's. This was based on Christmas Every Day, a nice little Christmas special that ended Season 1. In this, you're supposed to keep Christmas going forever, though I'm fairly certain the episode told us why that would be a bad idea. But whatever, let's do this. The other holidays are jealous, so you have to kill them with snowballs. You stand on the roof of Santa's workshop and throw them at both the other holiday mascots and a swarm of angry elves. And it's funny when Cupid comes in. Get it! You can also hit power-ups to receive some cool bonuses. These'll really shake up the game. This is really easy, but you'll have a lot of fun with it. The same concept would be reused in Merry Mayhem, a Spongebob game Smashing Ideas would make in 2009. But this wasn't the most notable Smashing Ideas game that came out this year. No, not at all. The final game I'd like to cover in this video is an especially big one. It was made to be part of the Nick Arcade, which Information Stupor Highway was also part of. This was a Nickelodeon service that sold downloadable games throughout the 2000s. So now we're going to look at Timmy's Roach Rampage, largely inspired by the episode Wanda's Day Off. Listen to the music. So you type your name in, and then you get an opening cutscene in a comic style. The whole game has cutscenes throughout it, which are really cool to see. So while Timmy's at school, Cosmo and Wanda spot a roach. Trying to deal with it, Cosmo accidentally makes it bigger. Then this happens. <laughs> So Cosmo and Wanda go to Timmy's school to tell him about the flying intelligent roach invasion. And then... 
Okay, that really shouldn't be as funny as it is. So now your mission is to stop the queen roach. You take control of Timmy and your fairies give you a roach normalizer to turn all the roaches back to normal. I know, it's so disappointing that you don't actually get to kill them. We're going by Batman logic in this. You also get what's called a universal suit, which allows you to breathe in water in space. Can't imagine why we'd need that feature. Hopefully this battle isn't taken anywhere peculiar. There are also wishing stars, just like in the console games. Then we're brought to the stage select screen. Each area is five stages long, along with a bonus round. There are 26 in total, but the last one is the final boss. You start at the school playground and fly around in a horizontal perspective. You fly through the screen and shoot at all the different roaches that come toward you. You can also grab power-ups, and trust me, they're highly necessary. The spread shot will demolish all of the bugs that come your way. And with the rapid fire, you can just keep shooting and nothing will even come close to you. For an even cooler feature, you can collect the power-up you're already holding to upgrade it. Now this game manages to be so much more than a typical sideways shooter. There are all sorts of animations you can see in the background and even the foreground sometimes. The roaches can vary in strength and appearance and their formations can get really creative. Also, be ready for the bosses. The stages may seem like a cakewalk at first, but these can give you a run for your money. But once you get past the playground, you get to play dodgeball. You throw dodgeballs at the enemy roaches and try not to get hit yourself. It's pretty fun. Then it's on to the aquifer. Seriously, that's how it's pronounced? That's weird. And this really gives you a taste for how creative these stages can get. Now we're underwater and shooting roaches in wetsuits. We also have a sonic wave power-up that can shoot both in front and behind us. It may not do as much damage as the other power-ups, but it can come in handy when certain enemy formations get behind you. Also, roaches can just smash through the walls and join the fight. What is this, Resident Evil 2? Another cool feature that's in nearly every stage is the ability to see the silhouettes of the enemies in the background before they approach you. It can also help you prepare for what's to come. Then when you're in the regular ocean, this guy with claws chops stuff down on you. Then you fight him. But they must have had a lot of fun designing this water section. Look, now there's a minefield. Come on, Wanda, how the heck am I supposed to reach that star? Then you fight through a series of pipes, fight this roach in a submarine, and then you get your next bonus round. It's reminiscent of Tempest, and you have to shoot roaches before they can climb out of a sewer. As a big Tempest fan, I love this one. But after this, we head downtown, and it's back to shooting the big roaches. Now you can get lasers, which are effective, but kind of slow and not my favorite weapon of the bunch. But the real headaches in this stage are the armored roaches. You can't kill them, so you just have to avoid them as they circle around you. They make a funny noise when you shoot them though. It's good to have variety like this. Keeps every level fresh. And I will admit, the final boss of downtown was the first time I really struggled with a section of this game. It was a real pain to take down, but satisfying to do so. Thankfully, you can continue where you left off from the level select screen, but no matter what stage you pick, you have to watch that section's opening cutscene all over again. But in the next minigame, you're in the mall and trying to drop balloons filled with bug juice on the roaches. They're impersonating regular shoppers, so you can't hit the normal citizens. Not sure how bug juice defeats the roaches, but that's what the instructions say it is. I guess I'm stronger than the roaches because I used to drink this stuff all the time. But the stage is okay. So now here comes the big one. For these next six levels, we're going into outer space. Wouldn't be a space shooter without space, now would it? The sonic wave will come in handy here because there are a ton of swarms you'll be up against, and they sure do love to circle you. Then you eventually have to battle asteroids as well. And the final boss is this evil ship that has a force field, so you have to wait until it's down to strike. Again, I really like how they keep shaking things up. Really keeps you engaged and not knowing what to expect with each level. They had to make this game worth every penny of the six dollars you paid for it. Then the bonus round is a game of asteroids, but with roaches in it too. If you like asteroids, you'll probably like this one too. But my favorite asteroids iteration is still Space Rocks on Wild Tangent. So what could possibly follow space as our final location in this? We literally took this battle outside of Earth. How much higher could we get? Heaven? Well, how about Timmy's neighborhood? Yeah, that works. It's a fairly standard location, but it gets really interesting toward the end. You get hit with a few of your former bosses at once, flying past them until you meet with the very first one. Then this happens. Okay, that was cool. Setting it up like we're gonna fight this guy only for him to be blown up by this bigger guy? Good one, smashing ideas. But watch what happens when you beat him.
and then you go to fight the queen. But not exactly how you might expect. Timmy gets shrunk, so he flies into her stomach, and that means our final stage takes place in the belly of a ginormous cockroach. Reminds me of when we had to go into a tarantula's rectum and jumpstart third grade. The stage is kind of disturbing because you're blasting these things that just jut out of the queen's insides, and I'm not really sure what they are, and I really don't think I want to know. Then she appears in a magic bubble thing and you shoot her till she dies. She isn't that hard. Then you get the final cutscene of her turning back to normal and you head back home victoriously. Here's the ending. And that was Timmy's Roach Invasion. So, what do we think about it? Honestly? It's really good. We've looked at a lot of Nick Arcade games on this channel, but to be honest, they aren't always spectacular. But I think this is one of the higher quality ones. It's long and has two different difficulty modes, so you can keep yourself playing for a while. There's a lot to see in every stage, and they're legitimately fun to play through. I don't really have any major criticisms for it. Smashing Ideas knocked it out of the park. Good job. So that's gonna do it for this video. The Fairly Odd Parents would go on to have many, many more Flash games, more than most other Nickelodeon shows. Sarbakin, Smashing Ideas, and a few other companies would continue to contribute and make great games both for this series and many of the other shows too. There's a lot to appreciate here, both the simplistic ones and the more complicated ones. The Fairly Odd Parents had a good start to the Flash game scene, and it sure is a good reminder of how much fun it used to be to watch this show on Nickelodeon. Playing these games will always be a treasured experience, just like revisiting these old shows that our child selves used to love. So until next time, thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.